We've had a couple of questions about what curriculums we use, so here it is. This is part two. All right, well, next up is history. You go first, because I really love Story of the World. Yes, we've been doing Story of the World for four years. Ugh. We just love it. If you don't know about it, find out about it. Check out the link below. So this is obviously the classical approach, but it's also very Charlotte Mason in the sense that it's about like that living, the living books, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's not this textbook that typically they're boring textbooks. Right. This, this is really- And good. biased, if <laughs> I'm biased. allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one thing we love about Story of the World is that it is very inclusive and it gives you from very lots of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And but story, it's world history too, mm -hmm. so you're getting to know about other cultures. Yeah, there's other people in the world besides the U.S. The United Statesians. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we love it because it's a narrative form, so it makes it very in interesting and very mm -hmm. um, entertaining. And so this comes with activities. There's a big, huge activity book with like coloring pages for younger kids. There's games, there's recipes. Um, there's suggested literature, which we follow because we go get a bunch of extra mm -hmm. books about it to reinforce learning. There's map work. It's just awesome. And you could actually, if you didn't want to do another writing curriculum, this could be your history and writing all together. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And she includes way more than you will ever do. The author of that is Susan Wise Bauer. There's four books in the series. This is volume four and it's designed for elementary age children. Mm -hmm. So really to start it like first grade, second grade. Yeah. So it's geared towards that age group and it really makes history fun and alive. Yeah. And you can teach different levels at the same time, which is what's awesome as well. And so I also include a timeline activity and I just got a blank book and I had my kids decorated with different history icons and... Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, and these cards come in the activity book. So, you know, they could get really creative. I wanted them to use it more like a scrapbook. They haven't gotten there yet. My daughter has, you know, she's decorated a little bit more, mm -hmm. but we really haven't had much time, but this is really good for them to be able to see where they are and what we studied. Yeah. Since we did uh, volume four last year, I decided to switch it up a little bit this year. In volume four, you get a lot of it's modern history. So you get a lot of like what's happened, which has changed in the U.S from the turn of the century. And so our, my kids just got really interested in the presidents and the president's times. And I have this book, I think it was given to me, but it's super awesome. It's the encyclopedia of the presidents and their times. So each page is a year. That's awesome. And uh, they've already memorized all the presidents. So now we're going president by president, finding out what things happened in their time period. Different interesting facts about the presidents, and then we are just like notebooking in these composition notebooks about each president. So this is funny, John Adams, and like my son's drawing of him is hilarious. <laughs> um, but I let them just do a little fun caricatures and things with the information to solidify it and make it fun. So that's what we're doing this year, and then. I don't know what we're gonna do next year. <laughs> well, we're, we're gonna... both be doing ancient times. So. Yeah, we're gonna go back to ancient history, either the story of the world or something. Stay tuned. Do. <laughs> next up is science. This year. Science. Sorry. <laughs> Bill Nye the Science Guy. No. no, that was an impression. No, it's an '80s song. She blinded me with science. She blinded me with science. Okay, so this year. I wanted to let the kids explore electronics a little bit. So uh, we're going through this encyclopedia of electricity and magnetism, which is pretty thin. But along with that, we're doing the student's guide to electronic snap circuits. So snap circuits are a super cool way and easy way to learn about creating an electrical circuit and putting together electronics. So the circuit boards that are inside of all of your electronic stuff is mapped out the exact same way that these are mapped out. And they have all these experiments that the kids put together. 
And they've been having really a lot of fun with racing each other, so they get into teams and race. So for science, we've been doing apologia for a while, and we've actually been enjoying it a lot. We've been doing physics and chemistry since last year, and I actually divided it into two mm -hmm. years because it is very work hefty. You don't have to do all of it, but there's a lot of good stuff, so you don't want to miss out on it. Right. And plus, I follow the classical uh, history cycle of pairing up your history with your science. So mm -hmm. biology goes with ancient times. Anyway, see the link below for more information on that. It is Christian-based. It goes with the classical approach, and it also goes with Charlotte Mason because mm -hmm. it's all about reading, and again, it's in narrative form. So it goes so well with our story of the world mm -hmm. because you're reading not in a boring textbook form, but it's in a narrative, entertaining form, and then you're writing about everything you learned. Right. So it's very similar to what we're already doing, which is why I love it. And it comes with this really neat uh, workbook that I like. So there's a lot of work here. There's some copy work, there's crossword puzzles, and there are also little pockets and interactive notebook activities that yeah. you can do, which we don't always get to because there are a lot of experiments in this curriculum, which makes it very fun. So we do about a lesson a month. We split it up into four or five. Oh, okay. Because they are that long and you it's just really deep. You yeah. know, and you want to you want to be able to do all of that for mastery purposes. So that's why it's taken us two years. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have to do special interests for our charter school, and that includes anything from music to art and foreign, foreign language. language. So I really focus on Spanish because my children were in a Spanish immersion school before, and I just don't want them to lose that. And because I am Mexican and we're bilingual. So I, I want them to be able to read and write Spanish proficiently. So I bought this book from uh, McGraw-Hill Macmillan, which was actually suggested to me by one of her old teachers at, at the immersion school. And it's called California, Tesoros de Lectura. I got it on Amazon and there's different volumes. This is actually like at a fourth grade level. It is just snippets of uh, stories. So oh, we get okay. to really read great stories. And then it comes with a practice workbook and so I'll just copy this and it'll have some fill in the blanks it'll have different activities for each story that we read another thing that we started doing this year for Spanish was they made in a workbook they just filled it with pictures of their grandparents these are my in-laws and they it's basically called conversations with Nana and Tata you know which is what we call grandpa and grandpa and I put uh, my mother-in-law's family tree here and my father-in-law's family tree here and so I'm teaching them about different generations in our family and they're writing letters to their grandma and then we send it back and forth so like for instance my daughter wrote to my mother-in-law what did you like to play when you were a little girl and my mother-in-law wrote you know this beautiful letter to her and I did the same thing with my parents so it's been really special because they get to practice their Spanish writing and reading and then they have this amazing just treasure for the rest of their lives so. It's so awesome i know and then finally we supplement all of that with our co-op yes uh, we'll do a separate video on exactly what we do but since this is curriculum we'll just share the curriculums that we use so in our co-op we do poetry we do literature we do art and we do music. So for poetry this year, we're focusing on American poets um, because they're doing modern history and I'm doing the presidents of the United States. So 101 great American poets. We've enjoyed this. Yes. Uh, Emily Dickinson, Edgar Allan Poe so far, and the kids have Robert done Frost. great with memorizing their poems and analyzing the poems. So they're really growing. Um, we also like to study different composers. So we did classical composers a couple of years ago and then last year we started jazz legends and we're continuing with that this year and I use this one we're also gonna tag at the end some uh, score movie writer composers because they love it so we'll be studying John Williams and Hans Zimmer yeah which... our kids are musicians so they're really enjoying that yeah. and then for the last gosh three or four years we've been using this awesome book uh, the Great Artist. This is a really good book. It really is. It gives you just a little background about the artist, but then it gives you so many different art styles. You've gotten a lot of use out of this yes. book. And then for book club, this year we are have a list of various novels 
that the kids have really enjoyed and we do different activities with those books. We used to do lap booking at the beginning, which they enjoyed, but then we wanted to change it up and make it different so that it wasn't the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to do scrapbooks. And we started that last year with Narnia. And it's basically what now in public schools they call interactive notebooks. It's similar to that and similar to a lap book, except they get to be a lot more creative with it, you know, in a mm -hmm. scrapbook. They basically scrapbook their way through the book. Well, that's all the curriculum I think that we use. Let us know below what curriculums you use. We want to know. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.